If you have a major heart attack, you will lose from your heart around five billion cells. And so we need an absolute minimum of five billion cells to put back. And that's assuming that every single cell we put back survives. It's not actually the case. Some of those cells die. So we might need even 10 or 20 billion cells to put back. So the, the aim of a stem cell factory is absolutely right. What we need is we need to produce really quite vast numbers of these cells because we're not talking about treating one patient. In the UK each year, we have tens of thousands of people that die from heart failure. So if you imagine scaling all of that up, 10 to 20 billion cells per patient, 70,000 patients. We need trillions of cells to produce. This is our automated stem cell platform. Uh, we use this for growing uh, human embryonic stem cells and human induced pluripotent stem cells. Um, we grow them in many different formats, such as roboflasts and well plates, and we can use this to culture large numbers of stem cells in a fully defined, reproducible manner. Uh, so, to show you how they look inside the system, we have towers which contain well plates and roboflasks. The roboflask uh, is barcoded to keep track of what's in it. Uh, uh, the surface area of this culture vessel is about 90 centimetres uh, squared and when the, the cells grow to confluence there's approximately 25 million stem cells uh, in this flask. You can see the capacity of the system is uh, five towers each containing a potential 22 and therefore the system has the capacity to culture billions of stem cells. The kinds of stem cells we grow they rely on two really important things. The first is the nutrient mix, the feed, if you like, that we give them. And the second is the substrate that they grow on, the thing that they attach to. Now, the trouble so far has been the nutrient mix we give them. That's been very well defined. We know all about that, and that, that make, means that it's, it works well for us. But the substrate that we grow these cells on, we don't know very much about that, and that's proved really tricky. So if we want to take these cells forward to the clinic, we need to know more about the substrate and really that's what we've done in this paper to make a substrate that we know a lot about that's fully defined. Possibilities for regenerative medicine are still being um, researched at the moment in the form of clinical trials and what we're doing here hopefully is paving the way for the manufacture of stem cells in large numbers when those therapies are proved to be effective and safe uh, and were required to be expanded for a large number of patients. So we've been searching for polymers which can uh, allow us to expand, to increase the numbers of stem cells um, from very small numbers initially. What we've been trying to find are materials um, which are man-made uh, and therefore don't have the danger of using naturally derived materials and possible contamination and batch-to-batch -batch variability. If you think of mo most of the organ systems in the body, whether it be the brain, the eye, the heart, the liver and so on, all of these conditions are under investigation at the moment as, as possible new treatments. And so right here and now, in terms of going to the clinic, people are being treated for eye disorders. So in many cases, as we get older, the eye starts to degenerate and then we lose our sight and in many cases that cannot be reversed and so already in the United States, in Japan and then soon in the UK patients are receiving these stem cell derived eye cells to try and treat the back of the eye to reverse that condition. Just recently in, in, um, in France there were treatments for heart conditions and we can expect exactly the same for the pancreas, for diabetes, the liver, for other associated liver diseases and so on. So this will be widespread throughout the whole body. If you take the current clinical trials which are starting right here and now, that shows that these stem cell products can start to make a difference to, to patients. It's all early stage at the moment, all phase one clinical trials just with maybe six or ten patients, but um, so it's all very early stage valuation. But I think that 
With this kind of product, if we can get it commercialized, then the next stage will be to, to get it validated by the, the regulators. And so really, you could be talking two to three years, this could be helping patients. Every time one of these new products comes to market, it just makes it a little bit easier for researchers to do their job. Each time it accelerates the work. If you think about how the field has progressed, all of this started in 1998 with some pioneering work in, in North America. And the first five, even eight years of progress was very, very slow indeed. However, in these last five years, we've seen a snowball effect. And over the coming five years, you'll start to see a lot more treatments going into patients. And each one of these discoveries that we make is helping that process. That's why it's snowballing. Because it's also early stage, we don't know how good these, these treatments are. Um, there's been only one report so far that's come out and really that was just a, a safety trial rather than seeing whether the treatment really worked. But even though it was just a safety trial, and this is the one that I was talking about before in the eye in North America, their publication showed that even at very low cell doses, there seemed to be some benefit to the patients. Now that was not expected because the doses that were being used were so low, they thought, well, we just need to test the safety of this before we start increasing the dose. This is like taking a very low dose of, say, ibuprofen. You wouldn't necessarily expect it to help your headache, but you just want to make sure that it's a safe drug. And that's what these researchers were doing. So we don't know yet, apart from that one uh, report now we're into the phase two trials for the eye, phase one for the, the heart. Over the next three years, we'll find out a lot more. The materials um, that, that we have have showed great promise in our laboratories um, with the stem cell lines that we're, uh, we've tested them with. And what we hope to do is to partner with industrial organisations who can test it using their particular processes and their stem cell lines.